You've got Radish draped all over him. Lawton comes free to the point. Pechenig winds, fires, scores! Will Pechenig! Back when I was playing for the Austria Generals, I remember my dad's season tickets. His seat was section 102, row 12, seat 12. And um, he always sat there at all the home games that he went to, and he, he didn't miss too many home games. He was at basically all of them, and it was about a three and a half hour drive from Ottawa each night, and he would do that day of a game and drive right back after. So uh, every arena I go look for uh, row 12, seat 12, and you know, it, it just helps me relax before the game. You never, when you love someone the way I love my daddy, is my best friend and my biggest uh, supporter. And when I don't have the, when I didn't have the opportunity to say goodbye to him and thank him for everything, it's just the only way I can do that is carry his legacy on and, and do the things that I do and to help others out just the way he did. So. It was uh, October 29th, 2013. It was the toughest day of my life. My mom answered on my dad's phone. I was calling the entire time. And I, as soon as my mom was on my dad's phone, I knew something was wrong. And she had, she said something along the lines of, William, I have to tell you something. Your father passed away suddenly this afternoon. He, he passed away suddenly from a pulmonary embolism. And uh, basically the blood clot started in his leg and just shot up to his lungs and, and choked him. And, it was uh, within the snap of fingers that he passed away and it's sad that I never had the opportunity to say goodbye and tell him how much I, uh, I appreciated everything he did for me and um, how much I loved him. I remember Josh Brown, the captain, he was always my D partner. He was the first one to call me after my dad passed away because he went through the same experience. He lost his father at a young age and the Jens actually stayed overnight and they, the entire team came to the funeral, which was, it was unbelievable to have my 24 brothers and the entire general staff there supporting me through such a difficult time for myself and my family. We had a team meeting before playoffs where we said who we were going to win it for. I said this for my dad and I can't wait to take the trophy home to Manatech and bring it home where it belongs, back home for my dad. This, this is a guy that's got a lot of, uh, a lot of maturity. Um, you, you can see, as you see today, you can see a lot of care in him too. Like he cared about his teammates, he cared about others. For me, Will Pechenik's one of the best examples of someone that's dealt with a tragedy and moved forward tremendously in his life. And I, again, that's not going to minimize what happened to him. I'm sure he still has his moments. It's not easy. He was very close to his father. So those feelings don't just go away, I'm sure. But, you know, you learn how to deal with them and you learn how to use it to help others. And uh, that, that's what he's doing, obviously. So end of the day, you're, you're certainly not alone. I know my dad said that many times to me, things happen for a reason. And um, I know if my dad didn't pass away at a young age, I would never have been able to have the opportunity to help others out who are grieving the loss of a loved one. So I switched my number to 65 in honor of my father. That was the first thing I did. From that point on, everything I've done in my life since that day has been in honor of my dad. And so many great memories from Saginaw. I, again, I was unhappy at the beginning uh, being traded there, but it ended up being the best year personally for me on the ice and especially off the ice. It's where the foundation started and I, I met so many great families and grieving children and I was able to partner with the Great Lakes Bay Region Children's Grief Center. I was very fortunate to be able to start that program there and then the spirit of continued the legacy on there as well. <laughs> I'd actually signed with uh, Genève Servette in Geneva, Switzerland, right after we won the Memorial Cup with uh, Chris McSorley and his team in Geneva. But I was flying home to Canada on the 23rd of uh, December and 
Sean Burke called me and said, hey, Will, it's Sean Burke from Team Canada, and we'd like you to come play for us at the Spengler Cup. I got to live out my childhood dream, playing for Team Canada and being able to wear that Maple Leaf on my front chest. I was able to wear 65 as well, and that meant the world to me, and I'm sure it meant the world to him when he was looking down after we beat the Swiss Olympic team 3 0 in the Spangler Cup finals to win it. Every, everybody's grieving process is different, and, and for me, I, I kept everything inside, and my kind of channeling my emotions just, it, it all built up over a three or four year period, and it, it took a turn for its worse, and I was at a high in my career just representing Team Canada, then all of a sudden, you know, you, you think back on all these memories, and you just wish that your dad could have been there to um, be there with you to experience all that, but. It's just, it's tough when you don't um, ha get to experience that stuff with uh, with your dad, your best friend. And, you know, I, I feel for my sisters because they're going to get married one day and they won't have my dad to walk them down the aisle. So it's just, it's the little things like that that you miss or you wish you could have the most. And it's, it's tough some days. When I was in Switzerland, um, I went and saw counseling and that didn't work for me and I, I was reading stats and 75% of people um, in the world, counseling doesn't work for them and for me the, the best thing was surrounding myself around good people and that was with my Bella family and that was with my Green Gales family and all my friends in this area and the Durham region is home to me and um, the, I have an unbelievable support system here. and My Bella family. Colin, Phoenix, and Colton. They've been everything to me. They've um, they've opened their arms and their hearts to me, and um, I've, I, I don't want to leave Oshawa because I have a, a little brother that I, I never, uh, never thought I'd ever have, but Colton's my little brother. And Colin and Phoenix, I wouldn't say they're parents to me. They're more like an older brother and sister, and I, I can talk to them about anything, and they're absolutely amazing to me. And um, they've been through this journey with me every step of the way and, and if I didn't have them, I, I, just, I honestly don't know where I'd be. Uh, what's the name of your girlfriend? Nobody. Single? Mm-hmm. My favorite number is number 65 because of Will and his dad. This past season I was fortunate to play in Fort Wayne and um, I partnered with Aaron's House. Um, I became a, a children's grief facilitator, and uh, you know what? It's probably the most rewarding and, and best thing I've ever done is uh, being able to understand how children grieve and, and and the process that everybody's grieving process is different. And um, whether you can grieve through your words, or maybe it's being silent and just listening to others uh, talk about their grief, or it's it's releasing your emotions, and Aaron's house had it all, and I, I think one of the coolest things there were the different rooms that they offered, whether it was, a, it was a hospital room for those kids who lost a loved one in the hospital and they were too scared to ever go back to a hospital. It was awesome to have doctors come in there and kind of show the ropes and answer any questions the kids had and I talked a little bit of getting your emotions when they build up and it's it's a difficult part of your grieving process and sometimes you channel your emotions into negative things and I think one of the cool things about Aaron's house is their their volcano room you have no rules in there as long as you're respectful to others you can release all your emotions and your energy it's it's a padded room and it's it's amazing you can <laughs> let go of whatever you need to let go in there soundproof and they had all these um, therapeutic rooms where they had light therapy or uh, sound therapy or even making stress balls with play-doh I mean I'm 25 years old and I I was playing with play-doh and I, I keep that stress ball in my room all the time you know it, it does take a lot off at the end of the day because you realize that you go to such an amazing place filled with people who want to help others through the grieving process um, it's just something truly special and 
Canada needs it and uh, Ontario needs it and the Durham region needs it because it's one of the best resources and probably the best tool I've ever seen in my life um, to help children's grieving and grieving families through the loss of their loved one. It's been my dream for the last five years to open up a Heart Like Mine house here in the Durham region. I can't wait to take all these incredible ideas and form them into one place and have everything in-house to provide Canada's premier children's grief center right here in the Durham region. Will, if your dad watched you build a Heart Like Mine house, how would he feel? I think he'd be proud. Everything that I've done since his passing is in honor of him. He was such an amazing person and he always gave back to his community. And if I if I can be a helping hand to others and help them through their grieving process, I think you'd have a big smile looking down on me from heaven. And I just hope that I can help anybody out who walks through those doors and make it into a resource for every grieving children and family here in the Durham region. I'm Will Pechnik. I'm the creator of the Heart Like Mind Foundation.